Hi, I'm Marcel James, and you're watching The Pulse. About a year ago, I made a video about taking NMN and resveratrol and how I'd learned a lot about David Sinclair and his lab at Harvard University about wellness, longevity, and I'd taken a lot of steps in my life which have given me a lot of improvement and well-being, and I talk about them a lot on this channel. Over the past year, I increased my exercise, I improved my diet, but I also started to take some other supplements. I learned about some of these from Vera Gorbanova, and that's the focus of this video today. Dr. Vera Gorbanova also has a lab. She co-runs a lab at Rochester University, and there is from time to time some overlap in her research and that of David Sinclair. In fact, they've co-published some scientific papers together, and David's own son, Alex, even worked at Vera's lab. So there is a lot of crosstalk between the two labs. Now Vera's studies focus a lot on mammals and those that are most uh, like humans. And one of those mammals, the naked mole rat, lives 30 to 40 years, which is a lot longer than its cousin, the mouse, living about two years. So she wanted to find out why that could be the case. And this led to the discovery of high concentrations in that mole rat of a molecule called hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid has been found to have rejuvenating properties and anti-cancer properties and has been used in skin treatments, but also there are supplements that you could take. Do Not Age, which helped me conduct my interview coming later in this video with Vera, where I asked her some specific questions. They came up with a form of hyaluronic acid that you could take as a supplement, and this can help your skin as well, but also the joints inside your body, and hopefully help prevent cancer cells the way that it does in the naked mole rat. Now, Vera's studies also took her to look at all rodents and how their lifespans differ and she looked for commonalities between the ones that were living longer. And it turns out they had better sirtuin-6 activation. So after a lot of research, she discovered that phacoidins, and she won some awards for this, by the way, some scientific awards, found in seaweed can activate sirtuin-6. And this is the longevity sirtuin, kind of the holy grail in the epigenetic repair that are needed to help us live longer. They gave these phacoidins to an older mouse, 22 month old mouse, and it was much younger looking and performing than other older mice. So there is some lab uh, proof that activating sirtuin-6 can help longer life and also health span. Percoidins are entering now a clinical trial with Rochester, with her lab in Rochester, and this is a human clinical trial for people recovering from chemotherapy. And the hope is that the epigenome repair shown in, by the SIRT6 activator can help these people in the study repair their DNA that had been damaged from chemo. Now, the first question that I had for Vera is regarding a comment she made in another interview about the fountain of youth and how the concept of a fountain of youth is what drew her into longevity research. So I asked her pretty much point blank, do you think this could really, we could really find it? You know, I think eventually I believe, yes, it's the question of time. I think now we're making little progress, but I think, how to say it? I, I think it is possible. It will just take some more research and work. <laughs> So I love her optimism, how she really does believe that we can tap into a fountain of youth. Then I asked her about, well, what can we do now as far as supplements or wellness? Are there protocols we could take? Kind of suggesting NAD boosting and, and the like and exercise. And she feels really good about a lot of the regimens you can do right now. Well, there are definitely... Um, approaches that work. And so I think we went a long way from, you know, what it's been, say, 20 years ago, where we had really no understanding how to even approach aging, whether it's possible. I think right now there are a number of things people can do to take control of their lifespan. But yeah, there is still a lot of room for improvement. To add to that, she specifically spoke in her interview and her in her web talk with Foresight Institute about NAD boosting. And listen to what she had to say about that. So there are many things on the market available today, which I think is a good thing. 
Uh, and there are more supplements now that have a scientific basis for them rather than, you know, just somebody said something. Um, so NMN and NR, the NAD boosters became, you know, very popular lately. I just came back from a FASIB conference that I co-organized on NAD metabolism and signaling. <laughs> so these supplements were discussed heavily. So I think this is still a bit of an open question. Uh, they definitely benefit a particular condition, especially muscle health. Uh, so to address loss of agitated sarcopenia. So there, there is very good data showing benefit uh, of NAD supple supplementation. So it's very clear that so far what we know about NAD boosting is that it's very healthy for your muscular activity, for your strength. And I believe it goes much further than that, but at least the science is really becoming uh, specific now that you can improve your muscle tissue by boosting NAD. Now, she talks about a lot about longevity in her interviews, but I wanted to ask her about health span versus lifespan and if she views that as equally as important. Listen to her response. Oh, it, it's very important, but uh, I, I tend to not necessarily separate the two because uh, we are looking for strategies that improve both. So they go hand in hand. They're one in the same. I find this very interesting because it's a topic that comes up from a lot of viewers. What's more important? What should we be focusing on? But she views them as the same thing. A really interesting answer. Now, this was kind of a loaded question because it was sent to her through Do Not Age, who sells the CERT6 activator, but I asked her about the success of it. And I don't mean just the commercial success. I'm also asking about the success of its performance. <laughs> I feel very happy. <laughs> it's amazing feeling to find something that actually helps people. So kind of a funny answer. She knew that was a loaded question. But listen to what she said when I asked her about what advancements, what scientific advancements we should be watching out for. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking how to best answer this question. And the reason is that there are developments that are more along like proof of principle scientifically. And here I would name epigenetically programming that seems to be very powerful. I mean, it, it will not be there for maybe a decade, so that's why it's hard, you know, to recommend. I think it just to kind of get the idea that it's possible to reverse aging, that that is a very uh, reassuring fact that we can actually reverse it. So six activator, um, maybe one way to follow up on epigenetic reprogramming, but in a safe way, because we are rewiring epigenome but but not changing it completely like they do with reprogramming. We are just uh, tightening up some loose ends, but we are not changing cell identity. So it's kind of the same strategy, but in a safe way. So again, epigenic reprogramming is the hot one that they're keeping their eye on. And the CERT6 activator is almost a poor man's method of doing that with lower risk than actually reprogramming your DNA right now. So that is really interesting uh, that that she, she believes so much in that supplement that it's the only one. When she goes over her protocol, it's the only supplement that she admits to taking herself. She does say she takes a few supplements, but that's the one that she names and I think she really believes in it. Now she's around 50-ish. I'm extrapolating from when her research publication started. By the way, there's a link in the description to all of her uh, scientific publications so you could look over those. But um, I also looked up her protocol, which she talks about in the Foresight Insti Institute uh, video, which I'm gonna link to at the end of this as well. Uh, what else is she doing besides a, a couple supplements? Fruit, she's eating fruits and vegetables. She's getting in moderate exercise, a moderate amount of exercise every week. She's eating a lot of fish, olive oil. She adheres to a diet that's sort of a blend of a Middle Eastern diet and a Far Eastern diet. Um, and she said those have shown the best anti-aging properties. And I think it sort of fits her personality as a scientist. So it makes a lot of sense that she's eating fruits, vegetables, fish, olive oil, all the good stuff we talk about here on The Pulse. 
One other thing of note that she does talk about is circadian rhythms and how they're finding out more and more this has a huge impact on our longevity and health in general. So getting a good night's sleep, not burning the midnight oil too long, get to bed as soon as you can, get a good night's sleep. Uh, I find that NMN does help me get that good night's sleep, but whatever you could do to get that good night's sleep, that's going to help you maybe as much as anything else you can do right now for longevity.